Welcome back guys, it's Alex, and today we're covering an altcoin project that is super undervalued and has been flying under the radar, but has huge long-term upside. I'm thinking you guys are gonna love the idea behind this project, and so we'll talk about who they are, what they do, what current projects are in flight, and their roadmap. Then we'll dive into some chart analysis and wrap up with some realistic price predictions and how I'm buying. So let's get started. So the project we're talking about today is Fuse Network. And I wanted to start on the coin market cap page just to give us a little bit of a background context of the size of this token, the size of this community, and kind of the size of this project overall. So we can see that we're at 4 million in market cap, super, super small when we're considering that, you know, Bitcoin's about to hit 1 trillion here pretty soon. Um, you know, for, uh, around $140,000 in uh, daily trading volume. And it's also important to note that we do have a limited total supply of 315 million Fuse tokens um, with a current uh, circulating supply of 55 million Fuse tokens. And we can also see up here that only you know, 3,000 people have added them to their watch list. Um, and it's, it's just barely the 1300th uh, ranked uh, project on coin market cap. So that kind of gives us an idea of just how small and just how early uh, this project is. And so to get an idea of what we are talking about here, let's head over to their website. So we can see that their main goal is going to be providing mobile first payment systems with zero coding experience on a low cost DeFi platform. So in other words, they wanna put the power of DeFi, the power of wallets and mobile money into the power, or sorry, into the hands of these communities. So whether that be cities or other communities that maybe don't have as much access to um, physical banks and banking institutions, um, they're actually gonna allow you know, cities and communities to set up their own economy. So with their own stable token, their own set of wallets, and their own network all set up on the Fuse network. So very, very interesting project. Um, and obviously, you know, as I'm talking about this, you can probably think of a few use cases yourself and we'll get into you know, exact examples here in a minute. But basically what we are looking at investing in here is this idea of the kind of lower uh, fee decentralized payment capability for um, you know, additional communities outside kind of the uh, first world uh, especially. So as you can see here, the um, transaction cost is just a cent. So this is no matter the uh, transaction amount. So whether you're selling, sending a million dollars, whether you're sending a dollar, the transaction cost is always one cent. I, I don't know exactly how they, they uh, do that. I'll have to do a little bit more research on, on kind of how the, the math works out on that. But um, in terms of you know, comparing it, you know, anyone that's done a, um, a Ethereum transaction with gas, like you know just how expensive that can get you know, I was doing some swaps on Uniswap the other day, and I think I was paying, you know, $100, $200 uh, in gas fees, depending on when I was doing it. So we can see just how, you know, impactful that could be if they could keep this up. And kind of giving us an idea of, you know, who they're trying to compete with, that they're less of, you know, a cryptocurrency and more of a digital payment software. So thinking of, you know, companies like Visa, Square, Stripe, PayPal, that's kind of what the CEO, Mark Smargon, sees as their um, you know, main competitors. But he, his kind of you know, um, rebuttal to these companies is, you, know, you can't be charging 2 to 3% transaction fees for the rest of, of time into the future. And so he's talking about how the future you know, is definitely for open source financial services, uh, just because there's no reason for the payment space to be so fragmented. And when you talk about the, the future of payments, this makes a ton, a ton of sense, especially as more people are starting to come into the mobile space, more and more people are getting smartphones across the world uh, every year. And so this digital space in some ways can be compared to crypto in terms of just how fast it's growing. And so Fuse is kind of in a unique position where they can um, you know, take advantage of the hype in crypto, but also the actual underlying industry demand for mobile payments and um, you know, smartphone based uh, payments. So a lot of times when we talk about use cases for a lot of these DeFi softwares, it, it gets a little bit crazy. Like it's, it's sometimes you're like, how, how do, are we actually gonna use these softwares? Even though they sound cool, how are we actually gonna use them? And so I wanna talk about just a couple of really successful projects 
that uh, Fuse has put together so far. Um, so first of all, just laying out a couple of examples of what, you know, in general, people look to Fuse for. So, you know, payment services, stablecoin based economies, which you mentioned earlier, uh, credits, points and loyalty systems, since they're run on smart contracts, a lot of uh, triggers can be done automatically. So that works well for, you know, credit uh, points and loyalty systems. And then also DeFi integration and shared ownership in communities. So setting up an actual economy within a community like a city or um, a, another group of um, a population. And so when we're talking about um, specific projects that um, Fuse has actually worked on, there, there are a couple of, of exciting ones. And, and to have them have these on the board so early in their, um, in their lifespan is, is pretty incredible. So first of all, um, they had a project going on in Sevilla, Spain, uh, where they would actually have donors use their micro economy as opposed to submitting cash um, in the nonprofit space. If anyone knows, uh, if anyone is kind of in depth in that in that space, you know that there is a lot of issues accepting and transferring payments um, and having it be you know legal without any um, security issues or anything like that. Um, cash and nonprofits get kind of tricky. So when you can do it on the blockchain and have everything tracked and secure, um, there is a big, big use case for that. And the other one I just wanted to highlight really, really quickly, just because it kind of showcases the uh, power of this is a partnership with Paywise in Trinidad, Trinidad and Tobago. So Trinidad and Tobago is an island that doesn't really allow that much access to ATMs and institutional banks. So a lot of these folks actually need to do entirely digital spending to make sure that they can get their necessities. And so they're using Fuse Wallet and a loyalty program to actually make that happen and provide um, additional exposure to these folks who could not have access to ATMs previously. And so as you can see, you know, there are more um, projects that they're, that they're doing, but in the interest of time, um, I just wanted to touch on a couple. But the point here is that it is really, really impressive to see just how many uh, real world use cases they have at such an early stage in, in the company. And really, really quickly, I, I just wanna talk about their leadership team. I think that's always important when you're talking about altcoin projects or um, you know, other DeFi projects, you have to understand who leadership is, you know, what their experience is and, and kind of what they see as the future of the company. So. Um, like I said, you know, founded in 2019, there is, you know, a team working every day. It's an actual company. Um, you know, they're actually uh, working and solving problems and, and working together in, in an office. And um, they have a CEO. They just hired a new CMO. Um, but I just wanted to highlight the CEO, Mark Smargon, for a second here. So Mark has a ton of experience in DeFi and blockchain. Uh, he's been involved in it for about 10 years. And his most recent project actually received a 35 million dollar funding round so he is you know really embedded in the space understands uh, where the key problems are um, you know what the maybe you know major barriers are to growing a company like this um, and he has experience in the DeFi space and this this product Kalu is basically a um, different kind of uh, subset uh, under fuse network so basically what it allowed cities to do is create their own uh, stable coin and their own uh, mini economy to incentivize uh, rewards, um, incentivize good behavior. So, um, you know, things like picking up trash or things like, um, you know, paying bills on time, you know, you're earning rewards through a city stablecoin that you can redeem throughout the city. So really, really interesting project and, and you know, clear that, um, you know, Mark has a lot of experience from his past roles that are going to serve him well at Fuse. So really, really quickly, want to also just touch on um, their 2021 roadmap. I know we're almost out of 2021, um, but just want to highlight a few things. So um, they're updating their Fuse network. Um, they're going to make adjustments to how smoothly it's running. They want to um, make an improvement that's similar to the EIP 1559 of Ethereum. Um, and, and on top of that, they're bringing some, you know, major, major upgrades to their core wallet improvements. So what that means is that's their actual, you know, editing functionality on the Fuse Studio that allows, um, you know, the, their customers to actually customize wallets. 
um, and, and customize stable coins within their a few studio and while they're creating their economy. And the other really, really cool tool that they've actually recently come out with and I've, I've actually tried a few times is FuseSwap. So this is very, very similar to Uniswap if you've used that before, but the actual fees are insane. Like they are so, so generous. I don't know how they do it. Again, that's something that I'm kind of still going to do more research on and, and dig a little deeper into, but the fees are just absolutely minimal. I mean, we're, we're talking a hundred times less than ether gas when you're doing these swaps. So again, I'm going to do more research into that, but you know, just something else that they are building on and, and something that's already gaining a lot of traction. And just before we get to the charts, I, I wanted to cover really, really fast um, a piece of exciting news for, for Fuse. Uh, so uh, up until this point, basically up until a week ago, you had to buy Fuse on Uniswap or FuseSwap or another uh, DEX platform. Uh, otherwise, you, you just couldn't buy it. There weren't any trading softwares that actually offered Fuse. But one of the first BitMart exchange actually just listed it um, just about a week ago on, on the 24th. And so this news broke and it's going to be instantly activated. So it's going to bring a lot more uh, trading volumes, you know, supposedly to uh, Fuse token and a lot more exposure to them as well. So now that we've covered a, a lot of the kind of important backdrop information, a lot about what uh, Fuse actually does and their leadership team, uh, let's talk about the charts. Let's get a little bit more technical here. So if we kind of take a step back and look at where they were, you know, on their ICO here in 2019, you know, we saw them kind of come out around uh, six cents, drop down, find some support around two five, uh, so around three cents. And after that, you know, people started hearing uh, about what they were working on, started getting wind of the exciting projects and use cases coming down the pipeline. You know, this is when Sevilla, Trinidad, Tobago, all those projects were being um, put into the works. And so we saw this kind of major upswing to uh, about four, yeah, about 45, 44 cents. And after that, we saw reality come back here. Uh, we, we, we saw, you know, new, uh, new lows, new support being set in. Uh, you know, here around uh, eight cents, nine cents, uh, and then again here around uh, eight flat, and then you know trended down uh, to where we are now. So now that we've talked about the kind of the history of the chart, I want to get into uh, a few predictions um, and, and talk about a couple of key levels for uh, Fuse. So if we can see right here, one of the first kind of key uh, support levels was this you know eight five uh number and so that kind of started out of the gates as, as an important support uh it, it broke that and went up to about 22 cents then found another important support uh right around 12 cents so this is our 12 cent line uh and then the next key um area that i want to talk about is kind of this this run up from about 18 cents to that 45 cent marker. So let's mark 18 cents as well over here so we can get an idea of where that is. And now looking at where we are today, we have seen, and I apologize, uh, Fuse is not gonna is not a great um, altcoin to do the the 15 minute candles on. It's got to be the daily candles. Uh, so I apologize for that. I do like to do 15 minutes usually. Um, what we're seeing here uh, recently is Fuse right around, you know, mid-July, late July, finally found that bottom right around, you know, four, four and a half cents. And then this last month has just been a ripper. So, um, you know, we're up close to 70% uh, this last month, just in, in August. And so we're starting to see this kind of steady bull trend setting, um, you know, higher supports, higher highs uh, consistently, not day after day, but week after week, we're finding these new highs. Um, and right now, recently, we're kind of struggling with this important support line right around 70, 75, or sorry, seven, seven and a half cents right here. And so that's been kind of a, a key support line uh, in terms of recent uh, trading activity. 
But, you know, backing up now that we've kind of established like, hey, you know, we found our bottom where we're headed up. We've kind of established somewhat of a bull trend. Let's talk about where we, we could be headed. So coming from where we're at, you know, right around seven, seven and a half cents, we're going to have to first break this kind of key level uh, actually right around here where we fought this resistance uh, right at about um, eight and a half cents. So that was a key resistance. We're going to have to break that uh, first before we head a little bit higher. Um, but the next key point is going to be 12 cents. So if Fuse is able to hit, you know, 12 cents, we're talking about um, another 50 to 70 percent uh, gain, even more than that. Actually, it's closer to 80 or 90 percent. Um, that would, you know, establish a, a new kind of set of support and resistance groups up at that level. And so going ahead past that, kind of the, the next level would be uh, right around 18 cents. So if we want to uh, look at where we're going to be headed in the future, 18 cents, you know, right up around here is going to be a very, very uh, important area for uh, Fuse as well. And so when we're talking about you know, midterm uh, predictions, you know, we got to look at 12 cents as a, a very, very important target. I, I would say in terms of, you know, midterm, that's kind of what we what we want to see. So that would be, you know, around here, 12, 12 cents. The absolute, you know, moonshot bullish case, <laughs> if you want to call it that, um, would be, you know, this this 45 cent number. I mean, this is a 600% uh, increase from from where we are today. Uh, so we'd have to see, you know, something pretty in, incredible for that to happen in the, in the midterm. Um, but long term, it kind of gives us an idea like, hey, there is opportunity out there, you know, with all of these coins hitting all time highs, um, you know, all with bullish trends. It's, it's hard to find something like this where we haven't quite broken out yet. So um, definitely some long term uh, potential. Um, and definitely some interesting levels that we could be hitting here in the next few years with Fuse. So in terms of what I've been doing, uh, in, in terms of accumulating my position, I've been looking a lot at kind of buying up these uh, resistance levels. So every time that I'm seeing, a, and if you've watched my previous video, you've seen me kind of uh, talk about this before, but I'm kind of focusing on buying these key resistance levels. So lately in the last week or so, it's been around seven, uh, seven cents ish, seven and a half cents. I've just been kind of scooping up there. Um, and another really, really important aspect of investing in Fuse, especially if you're going to be a long term investor, which, you know, I wouldn't try to time this thing. I would definitely try to go long term. Um, another important thing to uh, consider is the fact that they allow you to stake. And so so, I mean, I mean, staking, if you all, you know, if anyone knows that this, this could be a whole nother video in and of itself, but uh, for the, for the interest of time, for the purpose of this video, staking essentially gives you returns on your cryptocurrency for helping stabilize and secure the network by basically um, submitting your fuse to a, a pool where, you know, everyone's kind of helping to secure the network. And so, for example, if I wanted to put 40 fuse in, which is, you know, nothing. But if I wanted to put 40 fuse in, you know, in a year without compounding, I'd get 12 fuse back. The current uh, APY is about 30%. So when you're talking about, you know, not only just buying up a little bit at a time, but also getting, you know, 30% back on those returns every year, that's pretty incredible. Um, you know, you know, it's going to shield you a little bit from that volatility as well. And so if we take a look at uh, you know, staking and, and what kind of that could mean for you. So let, let's see if we put in, you know, a thousand dollars, we're staking fuse, you know, our term's going to be five years. Um, we're going to compound it because so we're going to assume that you're not taking out any of your fuse, you're just letting it sit in there and compound. Um, and you're getting additional staking rewards on top of your uh, rewards that you're adding to your total. Let's say this is a really, really cool, um, you know, feature and, and let's say, uh, it goes super bullish. Uh, it goes 500%. So this would be around, you know, the the 35 cent range for uh, fuse. You'd be seeing over five years 342% returns on your staking, um, and this is going to be over. So what is that? Close to $10,000 over a five year period. 
uh, yearly around $2,000. And that's assuming that you're not adding anything to this $1,000. So this is just you're putting $1,000 in and just letting it ride. So really, really impressive numbers in terms of uh, a long-term investment opportunity if you're also going to be staking. So uh, there's just a lot of you know, additional opportunity um, and advantages to investing long-term in Fuse as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, really excited about this project. I, I hope you found some value or at least found it interesting. You know, it's really, really hard to, to find undervalued projects right now, especially when you got a lot of these puppies, you know, riding all time highs or, or you know, or, or trying to bounce back towards them. Uh, it's really hard to find, you know, a project like Fuse where uh, it just hasn't quite broken out yet, like I said before. So uh, really uh, appreciate you guys sticking to the end uh, and hope you found some value in this. So uh, we will see you in the next video and thank you again.